Wow. You see that view? Amazing. This is how Finland looks now. Beautiful. You can see the green leaves, flowers. It's so beautiful. Hello, my people. How are you doing? Hope you're doing great. Part two <laughs> of my experience as an international student and as an African living, studying, and working in Finland. So this video is going to be long, but ah, my personal people, I know you're going to watch this to the end. And please make sure you do because I have a big announcement. For those of you who will be traveling to Finland in August, so stay tuned. So when you get here, the first thing you're supposed to do, you need to register as attending then your university in person. You pay your student, student union fee. <laughs> Sorry. Um, after you pay your student union fee, they will give you your student card. Um, you can use that um, card maybe to get your bus ticket and stuff like that. There are um, other um, discounts, student discounts that you get in other places. So that student card is very important. You also get... Um, um, a paper from your school in order to get your boss card, which is um, also you also have the student discount there for you to get your boss card because you need it <laughs> for movements and you also need to register um, in the in your municipality, so you need to register in the population system so that you're in Finland, you're living here. Okay, so what next? Um, you need to visit a bank yeah to open an account it's very important because if not even if you get a job where are they going to pay you so you need to open a bank account in finland and these things are all something that you just go to a bank you have no idea bank you have s bank there are different banks here in finland so you go there and then they will help you out with everything the next hint that i want to give you make sure you are familiar with the second hand shops around your area. You need it all. You are not going to the shop to buy brand new pots. For what now? Brand new plate. Why? <laughs> so you can go to the second hand shops and get pots, plates, you know, some kitchen utensils that you need. I want to talk a little bit about applying for an apartment in Finland. This is something you do even before you move to Finland. You you, you um you can do that online. You apply for the apartment, they get back to you. When you get the apartment, you pay your uh, your rent. And then if you have someone who can help you pick up your key, the key to your apartment, they can pick it up before you arrive here in Finland. Or you can arrive here in Finland and then you go pick it up. So these are the most important things that, that you must do when you arrive, like during your first week. Or the first few weeks here in Finland. Um, <laughs> the first day um, uh, when I went to school, I was like, hi, hello, and I didn't get um, kind of that, you know, the vibe wasn't there. Um, so I was like, oh my god, what's going on? Even in my student apartment, hello, hi, how are you? Like some respond, but like 80% did not respond. And I was like, I remember calling my husband, I was like, I want to go back. <laughs> like, what's what? What is this? What? Oh, why am I here? You know, I was like, I, I want to go back. I want to go back home. And my student apartment was a shared apartment. Shared apartment in the sense that I had my room and then a, a, another room like in the same apartment, and we were sharing. I was sharing the bathroom. Um, the the. The kitchen and the common space with my roommate so it was a shared furnished apartment so furnished apartment in the sense that you have a bed a um, reading table a um, study table a um, chair like just the basic in the room right so the fridge and everything so you didn't need to worry about oh 
I have to go and look for a bed. Oh, I have to look for this. So everything was there. All you, all I got was my pillow, blanket, um, pot, plates, and that's it. All right. So it's good to apply for a shared apartment because a shared furnished apartment because it's cheap and also you have a roommate. If you have a, if you if you have a good roommate, then it's nice, right? So if your roommate is super nice, then you want to live with someone that at least you can talk to because. Finland people are really 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 quiet it's not like you're not coming to feel the vibe that you feel in Africa so you need someone to talk to all the time all right so and also living in a school student apartment was really good at least you're getting the noise at night when students are coming from parties late at night even though it kind of like disturbs your sleep but it's really good because you feel like okay I'm living with people because like I mentioned it's really quiet here in Finland um my my the next highlight for me was like my lecturers were amazing my supervisor daniel hello daniel he was so nice we had this relationship together with my husband um <clears throat> i remember when when i i was writing my maturity test my daughter was eight months old i took her to school and daniel was there uh, my friend Evis was there with um, the university, they were taking care of her while I was writing my maturity test. That's one experience I'll never forget. So, amazing. So the thing is all about, for me, what really works for me as an international student and as an African living in Finland is that I embrace people wherever I find myself. I try to show love, kindness, you know, bring everyone close to me, you know, treat everyone as family. Um, sometimes it's not gonna work because people don't understand these things but when you meet the right people like you have amazing and memorable times that you always remember so don't just come here and say oh people don't say hello so I'm not gonna say hello or people don't talk to us so I'm not gonna talk to them no just you know give them grace <laughs> they, this is their culture they are not used to our vibes you know so Give them grace, give them some time, they will, they will get there. Okay, so life after graduation. <laughs> ah, life after graduation was hard. It was really tough. Um, now I'm talking about the job aspect. It was really tough because um, when I was studying, uh, while studying, I, was, I took this um, housekeeping job. So I was working in a hotel. Um, which I was comfortable with as a student, you know. It was like, oh, wow, okay, I'm studying, and then I'm doing this housekeeping job. It was just all nice. <laughs> I did that during my second year, though. During my first year of studies, I didn't work, thanks to my amazing husband. <laughs> he was taking care of my views and stuff. I just wanted to get that experience, you know, to work as a student. So it was really amazing. Um, doing that because it kind of like introduced me to um, the Finnish um, labor market, you know, so it's not about oh, I cannot do this. I cannot clean. I cannot do posting. I can't. No, you have to as you're coming here. It's not like I've come abroad. It's really you don't have anyone here. Please just be ready as an African. If others like immigrants or students from other countries, if they are struggling, at let's say 50 percent you will be struggling 90 percent because as an african it's difficult here in finland let me just tell you it is tough so you need to be ready when you're coming here all right you need to be ready to spread your wings dig deep study hard network reach out to people attend events those are the things that will help you after graduation. Start planning immediately you, you get here. Start planning what do you want to do after graduation. It is so, so difficult without you learning the language. It is so difficult. All right, so back to my experience. Um, so after graduation, like I mentioned, I, I during my internship, I I um I was asked where I was working as a communication intern. I was asked to give a presentation. So during my presentation there, I met um 
um, this Finnish lady who just loved what I did. She loved my presentation and we we just became like we exchanged contact and she was my one of my biggest <laughs> then network and stuff like that. So after my graduation, I reached out to her and she was like, Oh Tabi, um I think we'll need to get our school, blah blah blah. So I applied and I was asked to come. Um, I was teaching a course in um, a communication course and I was focusing on intercultural communication. So I was teaching um, in a vocational school, management, business and management students. And that was like my first, you know, experience working um, in a school here in Finland. That was my first, you know, and it was really great because I, there I got to connect with there were few African students there. I connect with this. Even some from Bangladesh, Nepal, they, they, are, they struggle like us. And then after that, I went for my teacher qualification. I, I got it. And then I, I was applying for jobs. I was also doing other trainings, like doing my, my, my teacher qualification program. I, I taught at VAMC. Some of you have applied the Vassar University of Applied Sciences. I was also, I was teaching business students, same course, um, communication, intercultural communication, um, cultural diversity in international business. All right. So that was my second experience, which was so great. I really, really love it. I got amazing feedback from my students, which is something that keeps me going. And now I... <laughs> So now, um, after that, I also did a couple of training. So one thing that really helped here in Finland is like, you need to do trainings, trainings, trainings. Don't say, I will graduate, I will just get a job, no. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Internships, work tryouts, trainings, volunteering, those are the things that will help you because through all these things, you know, you're, you're expanding your connection. You, you, you are, you are connecting with people from different fields and who knows. But one thing, one of my, like the saddest experience I've had in Finland is people taking advantage of, uh, of me. And I think it happens to a lot of, um, African immigrants too. Um, while I was doing trainings, volunteering programs and stuff like that, you know, people always like, oh, Tabby, we love you. Oh, we love you. Oh, we love you. We love you. <laughs> what do I mean? Uh, we love you. So if you can do this next year, we, we have this um, position for you. You know, we we'll love to have you here. And it's as if next year will never come. When is next year? You don't hear from them. So um i felt so disappointed at some point i was like okay um i'm not going to rely on these people and i kind of like don't trust people when i when when i like when someone when i'm being employed by someone you know um especially when it comes to the position where it's not like really like it doesn't fit my qualification i i just like okay this is the same thing i've been here with Tabby, we love you we love you but when it's time for the main deal, then they don't show up. So um, I was really down. Then I decided to look away. <laughs> so I was applying for University of Applied Sciences Vocational Schools because that's where, you know, that's my qualification. So I decided to look elsewhere. Uh, and then, uh, so I applied to International School of Health in Key. Kind of like, I, I think that was the first time people kind of like, they were intentional about the way they were praising me and talking about, you know, my qualifications. They were like, wow, you know, kind of. And I, at one point I was like, okay, I'm not going through this again, but well, they kept to their promise um, that they made during the interview. And I just love it there because at that time, what I wanted was my, I just wanted somewhere where I will work and don't feel like I'm being used or people are just saying, you know, lip service, you know, they are talking and they are not working their talk. So 
Um, yeah, so I'm there now. That's where I'm working at the moment. And yeah, I am. So um, one thing I learned um, during this uh, that I want to share. One thing I want to share with you during my job search and my um, me working in Finland is that um, I think I've come across amazing people who are genuine the way they treat black people, the way they treat Africans, the way they treat immigrants, that um, I I don't generalize that, oh, maybe there's race, like there's racism in Finland, but I don't generalize like everyone, you know. I have a friend who is also a leader. I've learned so much from her, she's amazing. I love her so much because like, she's the only genuine, I think that's the only genuine person I've met, you know, like, you know, you know, she feels my mind, <laughs> and also, you know, um, she, she, she's not like someone who just talk like, oh, we love you, yeah, we love black people, but like, oh, you know, I love the Africanness in you and stuff like that, but she really do. Um, so that's something that I really, 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 I'm so grateful at the moment, at, uh, at the moment here in Finland, and that's someone I I look up to, and that's something I, I just want to mention because you may come across terrible. Terrible people, terrible during your journey as an international student, um, as an immigrant, yeah, living in Finland, working in Finland. But the most important thing is be positive. Mm. Don't get any, don't let anyone get to you. Don't stop spreading love. Don't stop being kind. Don't stop, you know, you know, bringing the light in, uh, um, into the room. Don't stop, you know, hawking. Feeling people's pain, you know, you know the way our parents raise us. You have to be there for one another. You have to be there, you know, even for those whom you don't know. As long as you are working with someone, that person is family, so you treat them as one. Um, that's something that has helped me. That's something that I always advise everyone: spread love, spread kindness. You know, be there for one another. As an international student. As an immigrant working here in Finland. All right. So I hope this video was helpful to you. So we have just been talking all over the place, <laughs> but I just want to share and uh, about my journey here in Finland and what I really love and some of the, you know, the hard times that I've I've I've, I've gone through. So all in all, I'm happy. I love it here, and I hope you are going to love it here. All right, so if you're coming this August 2022 to Finland, um, I will be organizing a workshop for you free of charge. <laughs> so um, I'll be organizing a workshop on, on the 7th of June 2022, and I'll keep you posted about the time and the platform uh, we are going to use for this workshop. So. Stay tuned, keep in touch, all right? So if you have watched right up to this stage, mm, you're my person. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment below. All right, see you next week. Bye.